our Jamaica Queens. Retribution. False solutions create grand delusions and relative illusions. We're all in a state of confusion. It may not be our flesh, but our souls in which we are bruising. You see, evolution is inevitable until we sit back and realize what we may be losing. But what if we realize that these abrasions, they're just uncomfortable sensations, and it's relevant that with each generation advances creation, that it's amazing how my imagination even engages a gratification. Mm. See, answers to questions on ash shall become a mass when we see that love is all we have. Don't ask the question, why look to yourself if something powerful just passed by your third eye? See, you just couldn't see through the transparent walls around you, even with the light shining brightly through them walls around you. You can clothe yourself, you're still naked to the world. Only a true master could feel ice is hot, fire is cold. Welcome to the real world, where the words are spoken, but the truth untold. Where the vision is soaked, but the color's too bold. Where everything unravels and the wisdom gets told. Behold, it's been previously foretold. Just ask your soul, your soul should know. You see, some people, they can climb the highest mountain, never touch the sky. But tell me why. Tell me why some people stay grounded, they still fly to heavens high. I'll tell you why. I look deep in my grandmother's eyes as she saw the light. And she convinced me the greatest peace is divine love you witness as you die. You see, you cannot know who you are till you define who you are not. You may think you know the truth, but in spirit you forgot. Queen, stand up! Born in Harlem, raised in Washington Heights. Thanks to stubborn and loving parents. Fell in love with writing at the age of 10, since the fifth grade. He's been writing poetry, short stories. Oh wow, that's different. And novelas. I wasn't expecting that. He began to perform his work sophomore year in high school after his SAT instructor told him about Urban Juke Joint. His work unites all his deep loves, religion, women, and love. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for the young grizzly bear, Mr. Lewis Gravely. Yeah! This piece is called My Prayer. It's dedicated to my girlfriend, Courtney. Yeah. Yeah. That's what that's the truck. That's the truck, man. I mean, we're nervous again. 
Let me hear for you, bro. Mama's here too. Walk. Like migrant workers across the archipelago of your curves, slowly appreciating the beauty of your landmarks, documenting every inch of your soul, smelling the flowers of the Atlantic of your navel. I love this geography, this wonder of the world. Like pyramids, you stand tall and beautiful. Like moons, your breasts keep me at ease. Your body moves me like the sway of earthquakes. I find myself at peace on the peninsula of your soul, at the beginning and completely in love, like nymphs. You learn me with your songs, like angels, you're holy, I pray. In the name of your divinity, in the presence of your love, in the wisdom of your counsel, and in the courage of your trust, that we remain affixed like the stars, remain in the depths of love like Aphrodite, that we keep our jovial nature like cherubs, remain faithful like sacrificed virgins. The pursuit of our endeavor will be something historical, something Monumental for the Pompeii of your womanhood is something undiscovered and unknown. I saw the realms of my touch. I've documented your body with my eyes, my hands, my breath, my faith, and my own body. I've cloaked you in my skin, kept you warm from winter showers, keeping the embers of your lust burning. I've given you every millimeter of my devotion. Praise you like ancient Greeks praise Zeus and the Pantheon. You're my modern polytheism, but I love you like monotheism, like devoted Jews, Christians, Muslims. You're the Abraham of my faith. I've loved you since the days we laid in dirt, clutching to each other's bodies, afraid to fall from the heights of our engagements. I've always loved you, since I found out someone like you was alive, since I was introduced to the marvel that is you, your mythology. You stand colossal, a titan, Gaia, mythological like Anubis, bold like thunder, eyes like eclipses. You, your mythology in your own class of deity, mankind fashioned the Bible from your lullabies, the Quran from your dreams, the April path from your footsteps. They created fire to see you in darkness, they tried to mimic your light, they created weapons to defend you from cosmological men. Yeah. Your mythology, the only wonder of your species, woman like no other, human like there never was, aurora borealis, your lightning caught in a bottle, your faith caught in a cross, your messiah wrapped in linen, draped in silk, drenched in sweat, looking at me as if you found your personal Christ. And I love you, like my own religion. <laughs> I love you like my own religion, in the name of your trust, your happiness, and your love. I love you. Amen. Esto es para las leyendas de mi corazón the inspiration for my motivation and action, for the passion transpired and the memories of movements, for those that gave yourself more than they would take, and those that paved the way, I want to say thank you. Thank you for preserving this culture, for remaining defiant amongst the vultures and writing what others wouldn't, for getting on top of stages and sharing with others, for sharing, for representing what you represent, Yes, this is my homage to the legends of the word, to the heroes and sheroes of our song that it keeps singing, to the known and the unknown, to the lovely lands left on Caribbean shores, to the skyline seen by the Royal Chicano Air Force, to those that use letters to raise armies and change legislation's laws, battling oppression with heated stanzas, those that continually care and consciously for their community's cause, said this is for the last ones and the lost ones, for the yours and the bros, Loisada of Bronx, El Barrio, for the godmothers and godfathers of this thing we have here. No words can make it clear enough what we owe you. This is for the young lords, old kings, and quintessential queens that blessed us with their infinite beauty in times of cruelty and pain. The voices that carry inspirations on their back, spears in their teeth, crack doors open wider than they've ever been before. Say this is for the trailblazers and pioneers creating paths to travel on. 
For you are the reason why I pass burning torches of light to students in the South Bronx and tell them to build cities of redemption. Advise them not to wait for reservations, telling them you can manifest your destiny. Yes, you are the reason why my right types and nightly dedication long after the left was lost to paralysis because you make me want to pick up writing utensils and manufacture masterpieces. Mira, look at what these humans have built with their words, roads and homes for the millions to travel, the multitudes and more. The multitudes and more. This is for the one that made the sun smile, the writers that made the ears listen alive, and the artists that made the eyes cry, summoning enough energy in the atmosphere to make the four winds circumvent. And no mistake when I say that this, this is for them. For those here in the now and in the past, let's now take a moment to honor and remember them. And I'm not done, I say it again, my friend, until the stories are told and retold and the names of those that move many are etched in the stones of the lands that they speak of. It's unbelievable how the trees sway where you talk. We, we salute, we applaud, we snap, we clap, we tribute, but no oath for you could ever give us proper due and may the spirit you embody keep on in the hearts of humanity. Siempre. Palante siempre. Mi gente, gracias por todo. been back to the Barber of Queens for quite some time, so this for me is like a, is a homecoming. Uh, a tree grew in Brooklyn, and so did my dreams. On the cracked asphalt of tenement building stoops. A flower trying to break through, but roses don't bloom here. That's what I was told. Never believing that I could ever see a world beyond my periphery. Struggling with tunnel vision, I watched passers by as they watched me holding my baby close. Never expecting me to flourish from unfertilized potential. For years, I've sat here playing hide and seek with the shade, afraid to feel the sun's gentle kiss, knowing that its warmth is only temporary. But I was raised a warrior. Dodging verbal bullets of, you will never amount to much. Because young mothers never do. Words that bore blisters on my spirit. The unbearable weight of shame pierced through my skin like daggers. Uncertainty became my daily makeup. Dressed up in fear like I was wearing my Sunday best. I was broken. Menacing memories leave me maimed, wanting to crawl back into uterine walls before aspirations were deceased. Somber portraits of deeper dreams sink soliloquies into succulent black holes of unfulfilled destinies. But fate has not cheated me of everything. Because here you are, giving me a second chance to sew back the threads of life I severed in order to survive. In your eyes, I see possibility. And in your smile, security. Your embrace reminds me that I am strength. I am courage. I am a survivor, a creator, a teacher, a woman, a mother. See, you are the hello that greets me every morning like the rising sun. With you, I want to build legacies. Ancestral ties bind us to greatness. And so I must set expectations high so that you and me and we never settle for less. Yeah. Thank you. I don't want to say it. B-I-T-C-H, yes, that's a word that I hate. It gets me berate. It puts me in a negative state. It's a negative trait. A dog and I could never relate. My rate is like gold. I'm valuable and God broke the mold. See? You got it backwards. That D-O-G's really a G-O-D. Made in the image of beauty. I'm gorgeous, you see? Don't try to put me down, because the only place I go is to the top. 
Rise above, stretch and reach. I'm the cream of the crop. Never stop. I refuse to be seen on a leash. Verbal abuse, were you hating on me? Hmm. B is cause I'm beautiful. I is for intelligent. T is for my temple. Yes, you know I had to mention it. C is for creating words more powerful than goals and gems. H is for my presence. Yes, you know high definition. And just to mention, the next time you say that word to me, those five little letters are taken so personally. Just tell your mother, then your sister, and your daughter to listen to a man disrespecting generations of women. Mm. Thank you. No se puede corregir a la naturaleza, pelo que nace enredado, jamás su riso endereza. I'm going straight this week. I dread doing it. It's actually a waste of time, but it's something different. I like the change, the makeover, and most of it, it makes mommy happy. She thinks she has a beautiful girl. Since I was born, my mother wanted me to be straight, but I was curly. She made me moños, tubis, rolos, and all kinds of treatment to straighten me out. I used to cry a lot from the hollowness of the pain, or from the pressure of the blower, from the heat of the secador, from the sting of the picture. I hated the fucking process. To be straight was not worth all that pain. I wanted to be like, when I went to the river, loose, natural, real, free, curly. My best friend's mother changed her hair though. They didn't like us playing with each other's curls in the river, <laughs> or the back house, or our rooms. She changed though. She's almost naturally straight now. <laughs> but if it's naturally curly, yes, I was born this way. Since I can remember, I used to play with girls. I mean, with curls. <laughs> if it's difficult to manage, yeah, sometimes. But it's worth the fight, and I just love it when it's all out and wild. Thank you. Woo! Yeah, I make more noise. She's really, really nervous. Yeah, I make a lot of noise. Fourth in life. Where are you from? Me? I'm from Brooklyn, my whole world. I was born and raised on Fourth and Life, amongst love and strife. My instructions against destruction were always, child, mind your business or the needle will get you. The bilingual language of a whisper in your ear and a hand in your pocket send you to the store at seven, silent prayer for heaven to keep you safe. Padre, cuida mi la. While she watched you all the way from the fourth floor, a pigeon told you while she guarded you. Fiao, ghetto style. My abuela said put it in the book. Even back then, credit was the hook. Dame una docena de huevo, un peso de jamón, y un pan italiano. We played games with very little shame on those busy, noisy streets. Red light, green light, one, two, three, one, two, three. Mm -hmm. Mother, may I steal the bacon tag? Home base is the light pole, you're it, plain stick bowl with a broomstick. Bases were the stoop, the light pole, a manhole. Past the third car was a home run. Damn, those days were fun. But at the end of the day, you would silently pray. Up four flights of stairs to heaven or hell. Would there be laughs or screams, nightmares or pretty dreams? Her hand tightens around mine. Past souls, past corners, past streets, past familiar faces. Hug the corner, hug the street, hug my tío in the frío. He was a bum, yo, the world's scum. The bilingual language of a whisper in your ear. Toma, nene, un peso, comprate algo de comer. A hands in your pocket. Cuídate y que Dios te bendiga. Life was hard. We were the worker ants. Rush, 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 gotta go, about to miss the train. Hold the doors! Too, how many people could fit on a pole? Lack of oxygen lulling me to sleep. A movie unravels before my droopy eyes. Express train to heaven or hell, down forth in life. A voice replaces the rumble of the metal snake. Next stop, forth in life. 
past the doors, take the giant step to clear the floor, up the stairs and into Brooklyn's core. Eyes adjusting to the light, the familiar figure and its never ending plight. Hi, Benka. What up, deal? Scratch and please of, you got a dollar? No, always automatic, but I'd reach into my pocket systematic. He would look up and down the street, trying to remember the kid in me. Sorry. Pity, anger, embarrassment, offended at his persona. I have some change. His whole face would change. I speak broken dreams and broken hope. Smile through broken teeth, results of the dope, a whole family's life cope. The bilingual language of a whisper in your ear. Here, get yourself something to eat. A hand in your pocket. Try to get off these streets. It's all right, baby girl. We park, clear our throats, odd pair, the bum and his niece so fair. We shift, each of us going a different way in life, on the fading light of day, above the horizon of fourth and life. Past souls, past corners, past streets, and up the stairs to heaven or hell. This thing that we do, what the non-believers call that poetry shit, means the world to me. Much like the air that I breathe, even though they might not understand this. Expressing myself, sharing my soul openly with the world can be a redeeming experience, believe me. But it ain't easy, as I let it all hang out, despite their closed-minded ambivalence. I do this for me, not for you, not for him, not for her or her other brother's mother. I do this for me. But this is what I love to do. And it's a love unlike any other. I nurture, I feed, I hope to grow this thing inside me, what they call that poetry shit. I eat, sleep, drink, and breathe my words, not for the sake of conformity, but completely in spite of it. So I don't care if you're into it or not. If it's not for you, that's okay. I can dig it, but don't go knocking my hustle what they call that poetry shit, because it means a whole lot more to me than that. So respect it, and don't you ever, never, ever get it twisted. It's not easy leaving your broken soul open out there, heart in shreds, tied of book pages, blowing in the wind, the whole damn world can see. I'm just trying to open up a little and understand you by helping you to open up a little and understand me. Because you see, we're not that different. We're more alike in more ways than just quite a few. And whenever I hear your stories, you reveal parts of me. And whenever you hear my stories, I hope they unveil parts of you too. Now. This brings to mind a question I'm asked all the time. You know, people sometimes ask me, why do you do what it is that you do? And I always tell them, it's the words that I love. The way they flow from the tongue as they're being released into the air after being held captive within for far too long. They escape me, running freely like fugitives on the land, searching for a safe haven within the hearts and minds of those of you who are willing to hear them, of those of you who are willing to reach out and save them, taking them in, absorbing them, becoming one with the words that I love. This thing of ours called poetry, she's a beautiful beast, yes she is. She liberates us, allowing us to express. She captivates us and makes us catch our breath. She titillates us with her forms of verbal sex. And at times, she frustrates us, making us search endlessly for the words that fit her best. But poetry, mm, she's a filthy, sexy beast nonetheless. <laughs> it is the words that I love in all their forms, poetically spoken or expressed with pure rage, whispered softly in my ear like butterfly kisses, or leaping with guns blazing off the page. The power of the spoken word is not to be underestimated. The voice of the soul is understood by all. 
It can stir the emotions of the jaded. It can lift the spirits of the oppressed. It can help bring about an oppressor's fall. It is the words that I love in all their glorious, magnificent tones, some soft and supple, while others are painfully brutal, like a dull blade cutting clear to the bone. Some words caress and soothe, while others scrape and burn, but all the while affecting us in one way or another. As the words, they can see it, images to your memory forever. So is the power of the words that I love. I write to excite, to inspire, and release. My words taking me higher like mercury wings on my feet, soaring high amongst the stars where my soul can roam free. I'm no longer a mere mortal. My transcendence now complete. And as I rise, putting my pen to the lonely page, the words keep coming one after another as I engage my entire being with one purpose alone, making love to these words, my poetry, because I love her. I've known my mother's mother all my life. Her face is as familiar to me as my own. I last spent time with her soon before she passed on in San Isidro, a coastal village in her beloved Puerto Rico. She was 93. As I approached the gated porch, I saw her old age huddled in a cane woven rocker, body fully still, head tilted as if sensing my visit. Yaya could no longer work her craft, but she could comb and hairpin her two moñitos, the top knot worn like a crown, the other curled above her neckline. I remember asking her to pose with me. My arms embraced her delicate shoulders as I perched on the rocker's armrest. Her weathered hands rested upon her lap after she attempted to tidy the unruly folds of her widow-worn house dress. We looked straight ahead at the camera, no smiles. Weeks later, after the pictures were developed, I noticed the shape and odd angle of her nose like it had been shattered and the pieces never set for proper healing. Until then, I had not studied her nose. She was my grandmother, mi abuelita Yaya. Her face has been as familiar to me as my own. I asked my mother straight up, Mami Naka, who broke Yaya's nose? Denial came first, then truth, as if storytelling narration had been her life's occupation. She conjured vivid images of ancestral rage and grievances, steeped in cultural DNA, backed up by soplamocos and double-fisted blows. She said, ese diablo estaba en la sangre. Her father, my mother claimed, was driven by a generational bone to the blood mindset. His wife, his rights. Cushioned by religion and forced through law. An under the influence perpetrator, yet a humble man when sober. Volando bajito, his born again rage forever imprinted on my abuelita Yaya's familiar face. On a lighter note, dream dance. You were late for work this morning. No creo que llegaste a tiempo. Te detuviste a las tantas y todavía te siento. We were dream dancing last night, all night. You there, me here, synchronized, harmonized in our fantasy flight. <coughs> my skin tingled when you first appeared. Four fingers clustered lightly across my face, beckoned alluring sorcerer's embrace. Thousand mile Gulf Stream conjured swirling dance streams, como brujas que somos. You and I danced gracefully. We learned each other's rhythm, cross body lead into left hand turn and back into each other's arm. Full body press, cheek to cheek, no need to speak, barely moving in sync with loopy music stuck on one line of a slow Latin tune. Here just that day, en aquel lugar, amo, volverá. In that place, my love, you'll return. En aquel lugar, amo, volverá. I traced the curve of your neck with the edge of my lips. I kissed you right there where soft flesh eclipsed honey, female flavor, de un sabor delicioso. You were late for work this morning. Again, thank you. Thank you.